Welcome back to Broken Triad. So, um, I guess that the note about the director asking his wife's name is meant as a joke, because of course he wrote the note, you know, this kind of left the flowers and wrote the note because he's just so busy with work all the time, blah, 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 blah. Um, I guess that's just a joke that he was so busy that he'd actually f forgotten his wife's name. Um, yes, because apparently I missed something in his house, which is what I need to open the lock, and um, nothing to do with that thing, it's that wife's name. However, we did just get this blessed sacred hammer. Okay. So let's fill this with water. What does that do? Do I swim in it? No. Do I drop fruit in it? Apparently not. I don't know, I've got things that don't make any sense here. Can't use a bellows on it. Can't use a rosary on it. Well, that's... Seems to be a dead end, then. I have no idea what that's all about. Absolutely none. Alright. Okay, so back to the director's house. If we can get there without being seen. Probably gonna leave by guards. Other oh, witnesses don't really matter. Okay, so there's something upstairs in his office that I missed, which, I mean, not surprising, because I was in here and didn't find the thing, right? Um... Be close to look at that. Ah, oh, that whole thing turns. Okay. Oh, he's got a safe. Aha! Uh -huh. All right. That's I think that is our password. What did he write on here? Patience is beyond work. Come next year, you shall no more be married to him. You seem directed but to a full time husband. Okay. What's that? 
He's coming this way. Alright, well we should be able to get into his office now at least. Who's all this? God. Second of those is a civilian that wouldn't need to lie, but no. Anyone else? Okay. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Back to the museum where everybody is asleep. Except me is up late working hard. Right, all the way up to the director's office. Remembering clearly. Hello. Like a secret book? No, maybe, maybe not. There's, there's a lot of books. Ah, that's maybe why he needs to know his wife's name. You forgot. Dear Mr. Wilkinson, as much as I sympathise with your complaint, I must decline your request to relocate the code puncher. In order to transport it down the elevator, I would have to disassemble the apparatus, which is something I cannot take responsibility for, as the puncher contains a considerable amount of very fragile machinery. Consequently, to acquire a new punch card for the maintenance units, the procedure remains the same. Send somebody to my tower to convey the service point number, and I shall provide the messenger with the card right away. Yours sincerely, George Bolster. To do. I found another room for Curator Jennings. Her current office is frequented by too many people, as it represents the only sensible way from the stairs to the rooms on the third floor. Memorize wife's name. Ask Flower Lady if necessary. Determine if cracked glass planes were due to chaos transport or faulty material. Find replacements as soon as possible. We can't have reckless museum businesses climbing into the diorama. Write letter of thanks to Lady Valerius for her generous donation of several musical instruments. Locate that Martin character. Of the three books he had borrowed from the museum library, two came back yesterday with pages dog-eared and even ripped out. Martin's claim to be a scholar from the city was likely a deception. If Martin even is his real name... Okay. Probably a door. Oh, oh that's just that's the door. Right, I thought it was a light switch. Alright, what's his wife's name? E L A I is that an N? He's laying, there we are. Two codes to get into this place here. It's also about blue security rate control. Okay, so that's easily turned off. That's the alarm, no doubt. What's in the safe? No, because I open it into my face. Summoning and binding. Enchanting items in order to enhance them with magical abilities is a common practice, which, however, does not always deliver the desired results. 
Guild mazes prefer the summoning and binding of a demon as a significantly more powerful alternative. This method involves calling an otherworldly fiend and immediately imprisoning it inside an object which in turn gains some of the trapped demon's powers. Similar to a lion tamer, a summoner must be in control of the demon he is calling. The slightest inattentiveness can prove fatal, because once a demon is unleashed it can wreck the spellcaster's household or turn an entire city to ashes, depending on the size of the summoned fiend. Naturally, spells that imprison demons must outlast their cast up without fail. Okay. Mm hmm. Blah blah blah. Danger could three items well. Smut or broken triad. Comes consumption. Something defined and classified. Sign of the Dawn Mages. Something is going on. Mr. Wilkinson, remember to always deactivate the blue rays with the switch in this room before you deactivate the main energy field. Accordingly, if you reactivate the energy field, the blue rays need to be activated afterwards. In case you trigger the alarm by accident, you can turn it off by pushing the button opposite the switch. The blue rays deactivate themselves if they trigger the alarm. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me, George Bolston. So that should be the blue rays are off. About the DVD security there. So we need to turn the roof thing off and the basement thing off. Then still don't quite understand what we need to do with the maintenance spots. We need a service point number. Is that in the maintenance room? Which was... What is the control room? I haven't even been to the basement exhibits yet. Maintenance room is off the central hall. Just one floor down. Let's have a service point number. I don't see a service point number. Maybe it was at their control room. Which was in the basement. Well, that was the other part of the basement. So there were definitely some numbers and stuff, right? Certainly appropriate punch card, but uh, where did I see that piece of paper with all the numbers on it that I couldn't make any sense of? It's not something I have in my in here, is it? That's the one asking for the service point number. Nope, it's not something I have there. So where... Where is it? Um... Is it through here? What was this? Oh, this is the side door. So I guess I guess we just scour all the offices again. I don't remember where I saw it. Merchants, things are missing. Let's just go back to the main floor, right? Yeah. Hmm. 
wasn't here. This is the east alley. This is where we just were. Sheila. Henry. It wasn't in here. So we just came in here. So how the hell do we find the service point number? What's the letter say? Call a new punch card. Send somebody to my tower to convey the service point number. Maybe the thing I'm remembering was actually in the inventor's tower. What does that mean then? Well, firstly, let's go out onto the floor. Let's make sure. Let's be certain that those blue rays are gone. They are. They're emanating from these four pillars. Okay. What was in this room? No, this is just the western attic. Which didn't really have anything in it. Well, I mean, surely someone's hiding some kind of secret. But I don't know what. That's yeah, not going to break. Oh. Goodbye. Friend, storage room door, you you served us well. Can't take the violin. We obviously got the unbreakable glass because people are not climbing into the diorama anymore. As much as I would like to. Alright. I guess we can try going to... There's definitely no service point number here, right? Wait a second... In that maintenance room... Control room... There isn't a number showing up here, is there? No, that's just the charging station. You'd think it'd be on this machine, but... Apparently not. Okay, so we're going to try then... Seeing what we can see in the basement exhibits. Navigational globe. The globe displayed here inspects the land masses that were known 20 years ago. While intricate in its design, it is now an obsolete antiquity. Sextant. This device is used by seafarers as a navigational tool. It measures the elevation of celestial objects above the horizon. The White Squid. A scale model of the White Squid, one of the most successful merchant ships ever sailing across the Great Western Sea. The vessel appeared along, disappeared along with Captain Danko and his crew ten years ago. It is said that it fell prey to the eternal storm surrounding Tempest Island. It's a nice little model ship anyway. <laughs> I like the lantern on the back. Is this brushwork? Oh my god, this is brushwork, isn't it? No, okay. Wait there for a second. Because those definitely look like the uh, scaled down models from uh, shipping and receiving. And the lantern is just a lantern. 
anchor. Bloody Beth, the infamous pirates, wielded this particular anchor as a close combat weapon with often devastating results. Tempest Isle, its exact location is still unknown. This island has struck fear into seafarers for decades. Legends tell that anyone who encounters it will be unable to escape its unnatural storm and shipwreck at its craggy cliffs. Death to Banners. Creeman! Creeman are dangerous beasts whose natural habitat and breeding grounds are damp underground caves. Their mighty shears can kill an adult human with a single blow. The Crayman's language mainly consists of clicking sounds uttered in rapid, six, uttered in rapid succession. Push a button for an acoustic example. Albino rat, the ugly version of a white mouse. Those. Ape man, a giant spider. While the ape man has been renounced as a myth, the now extinct giant spider used to be a very real danger for animals and humans alike. Although reports of encounters keep appearing to this day, there has been no evidence of the continuing existence of these eight legged monstrosities. Well, I am trying to do my part to keep them extinct, as you saw earlier. Service point, 0928. Okay, okay. Guess I can't get past that. Guess we need the maintenance bots to uh, deal with that. What's all this about? Let's maintenance spots through. Okay. They would have a problem otherwise we wouldn't be able to get through to service point 928. Ah, only lasts for a little bit of time. Is that right? Or just by pushing it again and close it? No, it's a limited time. Okay. Um, because what's through there? Uh, anthropology exhibit, okay. I don't know why I need it. Where's my name? Oh, well, this is the other thing that he's shutting off then, is it? What do I need the maintenance bots for? Then. That was the uh, energy field gone. I don't know, but I do feel strongly that I wasn't going to need them, so let's go back to the inventor's place. Now that we have the service point number, we'll get some cards punched and stuff like that. Quick. Must have been here the thing with all the numbers, and maybe it's relevant now. Now that I know the service point number. Was this it? No, oh, there's Martin's suggested settings on prototype. Blah blah, adjustments. Yeah. That's where I saw the name Martin before, so who is this Martin fella? He's 
got fingers in every single pie that's going on, it seems. Uh, where's my map? 0928. Hmm. Guess we just put the number in here. Postcard, right? Oh, maybe that'll do what we need. You know what? That would be be a good place for a mortar. If there's anybody to hear my clanking, which there isn't. Well, at least we know what he looked like, right? Before he got his head cut off. Still can't get into that house. Control room? Was it? Yeah. Here we go. So, how do we know if it's going to get stuck? I guess it's already was waiting for us. And it makes it through. Okay. Thank you, maintenance bot. Nice model. Precursor City, a scale model of a precursor city shows how this ancient civilization may have looked like during its prime. Precursor Tablet, the sandstone tablet was found in a cave a few miles southwest of Arkford. Scholars have been unable to translate the inscription in its entirety. Assumedly, it describes a rite of passage common in precursor culture. To complete their initiation, aspirants to the Dark Watch must drink the blood of Yennefer. They shall stay in the Chamber of Passage for three days until their skin has become as dark and hard as ebony. Only those of worth can withstand the pain of passage. All others will perish within the very first day. Existing between the dead and the living, members of the Dark Watch have the honour to guard over the City of the Dead and ensure safe travel to the stars for the deceased. How can Garrick can read it? Alabaster Mortar, the precursors were advanced medical practitioners for their time. Mortar and pestle were used by healers to grind and mix spices and herbs. Burial work, this serpent staff was presumably used during burial ceremonies of the precursor society's important public figures. I'm trying to remember which mission it was, had a uh, serpent staff in it. That I used, I don't remember. Just wearing a precursor mask, I guess. Ritual dagger. This dagger's curved blade is still as sharp as it was centuries ago. It was mainly used in rituals to offer the blood of small animals to the gods. Precursor brazier. Igniting this brazier results in a magical fire that was allegedly used for cleansing rituals. The blue flames do not burn, but it was found that they can clean stained silverware in an instant. 
Well, this is the one that they can uh, climb into. Whoops. I uh, got my blood on the ritual dagger when I was trying to clean it in the blue flame. Why do I need a precursor ritual dagger? I don't know. But I can understand now why you want replacement glass, because you... It's certainly hazardous, having an extremely sharp knife there. Alright, I don't really know why I was doing all that, except that it was there. Presumably it becomes important later. I don't know. What we need to do is our primary objective. Do the swap, turn everything back on. Didn't even read this. The sleeper. Rumour has it that an unknown artist sculpted this forbidding stone bust during a fever dream. Allegedly he died from shock when he saw his finished creation with clear eyes. Well, it's time for us to swap it for the fake. Somewhere here. This is our fake. And now we need to turn the energy field back on. Basement and roof. And then the blue glass. Can we close this? We can. the top. Wait, was there something on top of the beam there? No, it was just the light rays I saw. I'd looked before, but for some reason I thought I saw something out in front of my eye this time that I hadn't imagined before. Alright, we should be having energy field reactivated. Should just verify, right? Just to be sure. I don't want to set the alarm off by accident. Energy field is back on. Okay, so back up to the director's office. Close that door again. Close this door again. Okay. After you completed everything, go back to your apartment. I mean, something is up, right? So many pieces of things we've found. I need to go that way. Well, I mean, it's quicker to go back to our apartment through the cemetery than out the side door. I have a bad feeling about this. It's not far to go. Ah, Garrett, we finally meet. I am Keeper Leonard. Forgive the intrusion, but I have an important message for you. What do you want from me? Only a few days ago, we Keepers learned about your defeat of the necromancer, Kadar. 
I was sent by the Keeper Council to warn you about the shadow that's been following you since that day. There is a demon living inside of you, Garrett, and he is trying to take over your body. Until now, he has only managed to take control of you at night. He has been using you to live out his hideous fantasies. You don't have any recollection of this. The demon has been suppressing your memory. You've got to be kidding me. Now, I am well aware all of this is hard to believe, but there is proof, Garrett. There is a secret passage in your bedroom. It is not well hidden, but the demon has made you oblivious to its existence. Seek this passage and examine the contents of the rooms below. Afterwards, return to me. Um... Are you telling me that I'm... The mad decapitator? You are not yourself. Look in here. Yes, its existence is not well hidden. In fact, its existence is quite visible now. Even when I have a secret staircase, I don't know how he lived under it. How did I manage to rent the only house in the city with a secret underground? Shit. I killed them all. The sword. It's sword Nyasal. Get out of my head. What have I done? Oh, I didn't, I didn't I didn't mean to pick up your head, sorry, can I put it back? Blacksmith's head. The blacksmith? I haven't even been to the blacksmith's. Sheila's head. I mean... I'm trying to pick up the sword, but I can't. Okay, what is going on in here? Great Western Sea is a map. Although you don't remember writing any of this, you can't help but recognize your own handwriting. I do not know how much longer I can endure this inner struggle. Each night is the same. With sleep there comes the shadow. A demon that calls himself Nyasal takes control of my body to still his murderous lust. And each night I regain consciousness in the cellar. Sometimes with dark blood on my hands, and sometimes with a fresh head stuck on a spike. During these short periods of clarity, I know, know, I know what is happening to me. I've tried leaving messages to warn myself, but no matter what I do, hours later, I wake up in my bed, unaware of what has happened. I smeared warnings on the bedroom walls, but Nyasal's influence makes me oblivious to them. I tried to leave this book next to the bed, but I never find any text in it because the written pages were ripped out and burned. The demon is mocking my feeble attempts at alerting myself. I think he even made me leave a message with my name on it in the Inventor's Tower, simply for his amusement. Although the arsehole sleeps during daytime and lets me be my normal self, his grip remains firmly around me. I bullied a curator into helping me gain access to the museum, and yesterday I killed her. I'm not sure how and when this started, but the sword must be an important part of it. Builds a Dolmikost out of an altar in the depths of the catacombs below Farrington Manor, and I used it to destroy the Book of Souls. Did this set the demon free? I tried to destroy the sword, but only when Nyasal awakes in me can I penetrate the shield of fire and take it away from the cellar. The demon wields the Dolmikost to decapitate his victims, and with each murder the sword glow shifts more and more to a deep red. How can I stop this fiend from gaining power over me? Each passing night makes me weaker and I fear that it won't be long until the demon is strong enough to remain awake during daytime as well. I'm fighting a losing battle. If only the Keepers would find me, I have a feeling they'd know what to do. Personal Note of Akrab, 7th Mage of the Dawn. 
I am now certain that the circumstances which made me the Dormicus owner were not at all fortuitous. Three months ago, I was on a mission to gather information about Lawrence Horn when I stayed overnight at an inn not far from the city. In the middle of the night, I was yanked out of my sleep when somebody violently knocked against the door of my room. Before I could even get out of the bed, the door was forced open, and a heavily breathing giant of a man was towering over me. He was armed with a peculiar sword, and even in the half darkness, I could see the frantic madness in his eyes. Where is the book? he asked with a hoarse voice. I was unable to speak, and I could only watch in horror as he raised the sword over his head. Where is the book? he asked again, making it clear his blade would answer if I did not. Realising I could not manage to utter a single word, I closed my eyes, awaiting the sword's blow. But it did not come. Instead, I heard a gurgling sound, followed by something heavy dropping to the floor. When I dared to open my eyes again, I saw the man lying at the foot of my bed, his head resting several inches away from his motionless body. On the bed, directly in front of me, lay the sword as if it were presented to me on a plate. Not a single drop of blood stained this blade. Without thinking, I grabbed the weapon, and the moment I touched its hilt, a strong feeling of purpose overcame me. I immediately knew the sword had a name, and there was a tale behind it. I collected my belongings and left the inn in a hurry. To this day, I do not know where this towering man had come from. Back then, I thought I had survived the brute's attack by mere luck, but now I am sure it was the sword's decision. Sodomikos betrayed its owner because it wanted me to obtain it. As unusual as it might be for a mage to wield such a weapon, I feel that the sword belongs to me as much as I belong to the sword. Various books I've read indicate that the Domicost must have gone through many hands in the past, restlessly searching for its counterpart, the Book of Souls. I believe it is the sword's destiny, and thus mine, to destroy the book. Now that the necromancer Kadar has stolen this very tome, I shall use the sword to put an end to his depraved experiments. Tonight. Akrab, Seventh Mage of the Dawn. Um, oh. I feel a sense of responsibility. To return these heads to their rightful owners. Yeah, I know, I'm slightly desecrating the dead by tossing them across the room, but... I don't even know who this bald blacksmith is. I see the guy I got to sculpt the, the replica for me. Oh, I'm sorry, Inventor, I didn't mean to squash you against the, uh, the wall there. Oh, I can't leave. Well, Leonard, tell me. Do you understand now? Not really. A demon that goes by the name of Narsal took hold of you and made you kill all those innocent people. You, you, Garrett, are what the newspaper calls the mad beheader. From the little research... I <laughs> uh, I mean, I was just practicing my mad beheading then. Um, sorry about that. I'm sure we're going to have to listen to him again. Okay. You understand now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the on demon it. that goes by the name of Narsal took hold of you and made you kill all those innocent people. You, you, Garrett, are what the newspaper calls the mad beheader. From the little research I could gather beforehand, I learned about the demon's origins. It all started many decades ago with an overconfident mage apprentice. Despite his master's warnings not to meddle with beings from other worlds, the apprentice intended to summon a demon and bind him into two items, a sword and a book. That's right, we found them in the lava caverns underneath uh, the mansion in ominous bequest, didn't we? However, the young mage had far underestimated the demon's power.
his spell was too weak to bind Narsal properly. His essence was imprisoned into the two items, but instead of being a passive enchantment, the demon had partial influence over whoever owned the book or the sword. As a result of his foolishness, the apprentice lost his sanity. He gave the two items away, ending his life shortly thereafter. You see, when you destroyed the Book of Souls with the sword, you allowed the demon that had been trapped within the pages to enter you. Unfortunately, we cannot destroy the sword. Part of the demon still remains inside the weapon and protects it. However, if we manage to drive Narsal out of your body and prevent him from finding another host, the blade will shatter. We have little time left. You must act quickly. What can I do? I have placed several items on the table here, along with a note that explains what you need to do. I cannot stay here to help you. I must do further research. You just read the note carefully and follow the instructions. Farewell, Garrett, and good luck. Keep as always. Vanishing. Well, all right. Uh, always instructions here in the hospital. Then, after you completed everything, go back to your apartment. All right. What have we got? Package of herbs. White cathedral key. Oh. A recipe? For nightshade potion. All right. Um, keep the letters note. <clears throat> In order to banish Yarthal back into his own realm, you need to accomplish two things. First, you need to die. As a demon can only reside inside a living host. Sorry, Garrett. Rip. Second, when Yarthal has left your body, we must ensure that he cannot find another host in time. As paradoxical as it may sound, your death can be arranged without you having to die. All you need to do is prepare a so-called nightshade potion and drink it. This concoction temporarily puts its drinker into a very deep sleep that can't be distinguished from death. This should fool the demon long enough to be driven out of your body. Um, it's a demon, and usually not fooled by chemical tricks, especially if they can watch me reading these notes and making the recipe. But I guess I should try it. Without a host, a demon cannot exist outside his own dimension for long and must find another physical body to enter immediately. Thus, you have to drink the potion in a secluded place. We also have to take into account that Nyasa might discover that you are not really dead and attempt to re-enter you. To prevent this, you must stand in a protective circle that can shield you from Nyasa once he's been expelled. I've provided you with the recipe for the Nightshade Bridget. It lists all required ingredients and describes how to prepare them. I've also added some notes that should help you find everything you need. I couldn't make the potion for you in advance, as it only works on the one who brews it. When you've created the potion, head for White Cathedral. Fortunately, it is currently emptying and secluded enough to prevent Nyasa from finding another host. I've installed a protective circle inside the cathedral. In order to activate it, you need to find fresh roots from a darkwood tree and make sawdust out of them. Sprinkle this sawdust into the fire behind the circle. Once the flames have changed their colour, the circle should become active when you stand in its centre. Trick the nightshade potion there and get rid of Nyasa once and for all. Good luck. Keep a Leonard. Sprinkle the sawdust into the fire behind the circle and wait for the flames to change colour. Okay, well, I've got the note. I don't need to memorise it. Um, what was the recipe? Take the leaf packet to place it on the table. It contains all the herbs listed here. Uh, plus blood of the drinking person drinking the potion. That is your blood, of course. Preparation. The ingredients must be dropped into an active death watch fountain. There is one in the catacombs underneath the Arkwood streets. You just need to activate it. Ah, is that what I did? Okay. The blood of the drinker needs to be spilt by cutting his hand with sac sacrificial dagger. You'll likely find an appropriate item in the museum. Yes, I cut myself on it a couple of times already. Fill a hollow chalice with the liquid when it is simmering. The hammer's left the chalice in the corner near White Cathedral. Just drop the cup into the Death Watch fountain and pick it up again. F effect of seeming death lasts up to two hours. Now I won't be able to remain outside a physical body for more than a few seconds. Okay, well, definitely objectives to be done. Let's. I suppose we want to start with the inventor's head. This place is closest, right? Oh 
shit. No, I'm not carrying a head through the streets. Even if I am the mad beheader you're looking for. No, come back. I mean, he'll still be dead, right? But at least... <laughs> How did I... not die? From that? I don't know, but... Fine, um, let's bring the lift back down then. I, like, took one hit point. I must have... Landed at a glancing angle on the uh. One single, well, let's bring this one back down. Grab the heads. Let's try that again. Hopefully, with a little more success this time. been to the blacksmith's place, right? Don't even know how to get into it, because uh, I can't pick this lock. And I don't have a key. Yeah, I've got a bunch of keys, but none of them are going to be the one for this door. That reminds me, we do, did find the wood chipper, and that will be useful. Now I don't know what I need to put in it. Okay. Don't mind me, officer. Just a law-abiding citizen returning heads to their rightful owners. A vigilante of justice, you might call me. Staying vigilant for uh, just use. Well, um, I mean, this is the blacksmith's head. So I suppose it makes sense. <coughs> to leave it near its front door. Or back door, I suppose. I'll just... Did I go in there? I did, right? Yeah, that was the neighbour. Right, though she was she was still there and does loot, but there wasn't a way to get to the blacksmiths. So um, I guess just leave it there and we'll try and remember to pick it up. Next time we're in the area. And Sheila Jennings, where's Sheila? Sheila. Oh, where did I drop your head? Down here. Uh, okay, so she's down that way.
Can I see that? I guess on the bed is probably most appropriate. Sleep well. Okay. So, we need to follow the instructions. All right, what are we trying to do? Well, you know what? Let's eat one of these fruit. No, let's eat both of them. Let's get some hit points back. Um, let's go what the billows is for. Tree root, invented letter, recipe. Blah blah. Okay, we need to do this at the Death Watch Fountain. Hello, Chalice. We need to Chalice. Okay, so we need to get to the White Cathedral first to get the Chalice. Um, blah blah. Okay, so do the Nightshade and go to White Cathedral. So that's heading east. Again. How do I get into the sculptor's place, though? There's got to be a way in. guards on the street are not the brightest best. Carla Henley, fishmonger. Basto. Oh, he's stopping there. Actually, remember this casino? When I was searching for what I was missing with the musical lock, I accidentally stumbled across somebody talking about the casino. Never. Saying that there was a wooden beam. And you know what? There is too. And quiet, unlike the usual ones. Oh, just some moss in here. Mm. 
What's that sound? That's odd. I must be getting sleepy. <laughs> hmm. Question is, she gonna be upset but see me? I mean, she heard a sound. She's suspicious. I think it'd be safer if she doesn't see me. Turn away, m Miss. What's that? Hmm? Huh? Thought I saw something. Whew. This place gives me the creeps. I'm back to work. Who's there? D did you say something? Who's there? I I Someone something. back there. I what the- I surrender! Someone! Yes! Yeah. Somebody get, get him! Escape justice! Over here. Save me! Dear, dear, dear. Nah. Well, I guess it could have gone worse. It could, could certainly have gone better. Not sure how you would uh, get through here without being seen, given all the bright lights of the big city. Oh, I dropped a coin. People are not betting very much money. Well, I guess I'll have to make do, you know, with what's in the safe. I guess not. Well, now I have another key. Oh, dang it. I guess I need to follow this guy back. around the side, shall we? Side gate and around the front gate. Well, you know what? It's probably better to have them both unlocked. Alright. This will be where we go to get the chalice, I suppose. Dwellings. Another healing potion. Nice. Oh. I guess I've been here before.
If they touch the cup, the watchers will harm you. They cannot punish you whom they do not see. Right, so we need to flip the switches till uh, all of them are turned away, I suppose. Well, that was easy. Well, this looks like the cup of a carpenter. Cathedral key, is it? Nope. Wood chipper, we need to go find the wood chipper. Well, I guess whatever's happening in there is none of our concern. Okay, now where was the <sighs> don't know why I need to have the apothecary marked. Um that was where the wood chipping machine was, was, wasn't it? I guess we head back that way. busy streets. I hope they're paying these guard all these guards well, I mean nobody better be taffing around down here. They really need it. <coughs> all so busy all the time. Where am I going? Not walking into his face, hopefully. What's that? Hmm? Hello? Well, yeah, just when I saw something. No, this is the mechanists. This all right, we're just gonna go set. Is someone there? I mean, technically oh, nothing. I'm too tense. Over there, that's where we need to be. Wait, but how do I get there again? Um, we opened, we couldn't open that gate, we opened this gate. This guard is 
Someone say something. You made a big mistake, Taffer. <laughs> Right, well, I think we managed to lose them. If not, we'll have to throw them in the woodchipper. But the woodchipper will have to wait until next time. So thanks for watching, and see you soon.